Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Open That Book, Rich. This is going to be tricky today. This book is is smaller. It's Katsuya Tarada. Ten-year retrospective. I've had this book for a while. I honestly am not sure when it came out. I don't know how scarce it is. But it's, it's, it's smaller. It's about, um, hmm, what would the dimensions be? Maybe five inches by nine inches, something like that. It is packed with like kick ass art. I'm just concerned that it's going to be hard to keep it open. Oh shit, somewhere dropping stuff. So in, inside of it, I had these. Now I'm not 100% sure if these actually come with the book or if these might have been a gift. Like I said, my friend Eddie Choi, he goes to a lot of like shows, like art shows, and he'll kind of come back sometimes with like knickknacks for me, which is very nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm not a hundred percent sure if those actually came with the book, the book I got myself, this is signed by Tarada. So that's a little suspicious to me too, because I don't personally think I've ever met him. So I, I'm not a hundred percent sure if this comes with it, but we're not going to look through this little thing, but it's a little pamphlet. Um, We'll look through the book, but these are cool. So this stuff was actually very, very influential to me. Um, when I was very, very first <clears throat> learning to draw, I was turned on to Tarada, I believe by Carlos Deanda. I'm not 100% sure on that, but someone at Wildstorm had gotten a Tarada book. I think it was Carlos. And uh, I was like, man, this freaking guy is insane. Um, and uh, really from there, I'm mean, going to actually, is this a dust cover? I'm going to take off the dust cover. Let me pause this for one second so this will be easier to move around. Okay, hopefully this makes this a little more manageable. I just don't want to damage the book trying to shoot it. I mean, these are, these, there's a higher, um, <laughs> higher challenge factor of doing open that book. One, I can't really do glossy paper books very easily, but anyway. So this is the cover underneath the dust jacket. So, you know, before Kim Jong-ji, Tarada was kind of the crazy artist guy. Um, he really, really did some amazing stuff. So this looks like a quite large. If you look, this is a photograph. So that's a pot. And then this is maybe, uh, I don't even know, I'd say seven or eight feet high. This is probably a reproduction. I don't know it's possible that this is a painting, but um, still very, very cool. And again, I apologize a little bit for the glare. Some of these pages are shinier than the others. But yeah, so I mean... I I don't know what Kim Jong-ji was doing like 15 or 20 years ago, to be honest. I'm going to say that I first became aware of Kim Jong-ji maybe a decade ago, like 10 years back, something like that. But I've known of Tarada's work for like 22 or 24 years. So I don't know. It. I mean, it is it is possible that even Kim Jong-ji might, might have really actually been inspired by Tarada in, in some ways, you know, like there might be a little bit of Tarada in his work. They're, they seem to be pals now, understandably. They're both <laughs> super badasses. Um, so these are really cool. I don't know what these are, if these are paintings that he did or prints or, or if they're um, uh, actual size of these pieces. Nothing would surprise me with these guys. They are that freaking good. These look like reproductions, though. I will say that. Because this is digital. These, Those are digital paintings. I know that for a fact. So, Or not a fact, but I'm nearly sure. So there is text on these books. I'm sorry. Um, but unfortunately, I mean, I can't personally read it. Maybe some of you can. It's not out of the question. Love this little girl writing a, like a little Hello Kitty symbol on the dragon. So his books are always big. They're always completely loaded with like killer art. And um, it's uh, he's another artist where you just go, man, how much energy does this guy have? How, like, how much is he drawing? I could even see James Jean actually being a little influenced by this, to be honest. Shoot, it sucks because you can't even really... It, I don't know... It says 2012, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's when this piece was drawn, but maybe it does. And this is at the um, Bunkamura Gallery. Here's another one. But I have, I have four or five Tarada books. There's quite a few more. I mean, there was a point where I was like, I... Uh, Carlos had this one called, um, oh, what was it called? Something King. It was like a, like just sketches, like Raku King or something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but it was just 
uh, it was the, it was a huge book. It was just all sketches. It probably would be very interesting for me now as a penciler. At the time, I was just like, it it doesn't all look the same to be clear. But but I mean, you start to see a lot of this type of material, and and I mean, you know, it's a lot to take in. So I was like, I think I've got enough Torada right now. I'm I can't even absorb what I'm what I already own. But now I probably would would. Uh, enjoy it more because it's like you know again i kind of always refer to these books as like vitamins for your eyes again i apologize for some of the um that's really cool i like that guy a lot these are very very tiny little drawings i know it might not like seem very clear but i mean these are literally about the size of like a finger i'm talking about like your thumbnail so they're real tiny on the page this is a full page he he does let me, I'm going to pause this one more time. I'm going to try to turn off this light. We'll see if this makes a little less glare. I turned off the desk light that's directly over the book. This is really nice, though. Yeah, I really enjoy doing these videos with you all. So, um, you know, thank you for the recommendations. I mean, I'll definitely look through my book collection and see, you know, when people recommend. Someone asked about Cannabis Works, too. I don't own that book. I'm aware that it's out there. Um, I haven't picked it up yet. I, I'm wondering if I, I feel like I've seen it, so I might have had a PDF of it at some point, but, um, you know, I would pick it up. I have to be kind of careful. I'm like, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm lining everything up to make sure the blaster kid comes out and is as smooth as possible for me going into it. So I have to be really, really careful of my like spending right now because, um, while I'm working on the book, I mean, I need to have money and not be working on other shit. So that's cool. The phone's like slipping out of my hand. Yeah, you know, this summer, next year, I'm talking about, oh, this is nice. Man, these hands are great. Um, look like my hands. <laughs> 20 years of drawing will tear up your hands. Although I'm always impressed by artists that have worked a long time and their hands aren't completely mangled. But I don't know, like, my hands are fried. Um, uh, but yeah, this, this upcoming Comic-Con, I'll definitely pull the trigger and buy a whole bunch of new books. Um, cause I'm selling stuff. So I'm kind of making room. My, my rule for myself is like sell 10 books approximately, and then I can get one new one and that'll thin the herd. I'm not selling the good stuff to be clear or what, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm selling the ones that I, I feel are, are less, uh, special. <laughs> like I wouldn't get rid of this. I like you too much, book. This looks, this really does have a James Jean type quality. But now James was in 2012, we'll say if this is approximately when this was done. Um, he was probably already doing Fables covers and all that. This is like a little Soriyama nod. Or, or maybe not Soriyama, but um, kind of one of those things. But again, I mean, we're we're literally twenty seven pages into this book, and there's there's probably another two hundred and fifty pages or something like that. C can you just even grasp how much this guy draws? And some of these pages are like you know, lots of drawings. On top of the fact, oh, it's funny, Eddie Choi is texting me right now. Um, uh, on top of the fact that this dude has done dozens of books, so there's this isn't like just like all of it, like. It really, really just shows you how much art you can actually create if you if you're that person, you know, that person that's willing to just kind of go for it and put go all in. That car agrees. Man, it's so crazy. I actually this will be a good one to um, watch back for me because um, you know looking at it on my phone is, is not as good and honestly the experience of, of me filming it is in a way better for you too uh because you are getting to see this if you're watching this on a fairly large computer screen i mean you're getting a really really like blown up um sort of experience of that oh man that is great look at that fucking thing oh man i love this stuff this is cool
Man, that's really, really nice. After this page, I'm going to pause it for a second. You won't really notice it, but I need to set the phone down. My um, arm is getting kind of, like, tired. <laughs> I must be at a weird angle or something. I'm not really realizing it. This is cool. I have a whole book of stuff similar to this. I can't remember what this character is called. It's been a while. Um, but uh, he did a story with, I want to say, God, what was it? It, it, it's like not Cinderella, but like one of those, maybe it's not little red riding hood, sleeping beauty. What was it? It's really, really a dark retelling of it though. So he does do comic book stories. So hold on, man, pause this for a second. Rest my arm. Okay. I figured out what it was is I didn't have my back supported. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting at a weird angle. I I, th I thought something was up, but I was like so into like shooting video. So I guess he did some Marvel. I don't know if this is fan art or if they were actually like published cards. It's funny. This actually reminds me a little bit of like an Eric Kennedy drawing. Not not like literally, but um, kind of the layout has a little bit of a Kennedy vibe. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, <laughs> looking at this, like it's like I was, when I was taking the break, I only stopped the camera for maybe like a minute, but, uh, I was looking at my bookshelf. So I was like, it's time to reevaluate what I've got in my office right now. Cause I have, I don't know how many books, maybe a few hundred. I don't know. Maybe it's more than that. It's, it's hard to say, but anyway, there's an amount of books in here, but it's not even close to like how many I own, but you know, do you ever do the like book shuffle where you're like, all right, I'm going to retire these books from like my studio and I'm going to grab out like this other batch of stuff. But I'm like, I need to grab more of my Tarada and bring it in here. Cause this is, looks like good stuff for me to be looking at right now. Odds are both him and Kim Jung Ji are drawing right now somewhere. <laughs> so I made a joke in the um, Otomo video where I said, I go, I go, I'm shooting a video about Otomo. Otomo is probably somewhere drawing. Although Otomo is a bit older. He, he may be slowing down a little bit and just enjoying life. But uh, these dudes still are like, you know, at an age where they could sort of blast it. Whoa, 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 buddy. What are you doing? Get some pants on. It's cool. Man, this was a really fun time for art. I was I was not reminiscing, but uh, when concept art really started to kind of blow up and things like this started to become, at least on my personal radar, I would say, honestly, I was early to, to adopting a lot of this stuff only because of the fact that I worked at Wildstorm. I mean, I, I credit the people that were around me, if not myself, but anyway, I got exposed to a lot of like really good stuff, but it was a really, really fun time and very creative and, and social media hadn't like exploded the way that it did. So it felt a little more special, which kind of did make it neat. Cause it's like, you know, you would, um, you know, like Carlos Wante would come on your radar and then it was like very exciting to like get the one Carlos Wante book and you, you didn't really have the ability to just run Instagram and sort of like see, you know, a thousand images of, of all this different stuff. So it kind of like, I don't know. I think it's great that we can, we can see everything so quickly, but I also think that it sometimes maybe affects people's attention spans. I've talked about this before, but, uh, Trent Reznor said in an interview one time, and I actually think it was very, very true because I remember the same experience is when, when we didn't have the internet and we didn't have such easy access to all this stuff, you really, really had to dig deep into the things that you owned, whether they were good or bad. And he, he used the reference of buying an album. And sometimes when you would buy a record, especially back then, uh, you know, there'd be like two or three really good songs and then the, re the rest of the record wouldn't be so good, but it was all, it was all you had. And so you would really try to find just any kind of value out of the songs that sucked. It sounds like a weird thing, but I actually do think that it, it somehow stretches you as a creative person to dig deeper. 
Whereas I, I see it with people that I do lessons and reviews to not, not all, but some is they can't seem to focus. And I think they're just over, that sounds kind of weird, overstimulated. You know, they just have too many options. They don't know what they want to do. And I mean, that's like a natural thing for an artist anyway. And then imagine having so much material thrown at you just da daily you know it's it's probably one of the reasons i'm not on social media very much is i i just find it distracting i don't really need to look at that much different stuff or even take in just that much different information each day i'm focused on a job which is drawing a story and so that's what i focus on not oh so and so posted this piece of art and this person's working on this and this person's selling this it just becomes just too much it's too much too much random radio radio info <laughs> what is this oh it's an upside down dragon head or monster head really really beautiful line work you know absolutely insane how many of these pieces this guy does that's the thing is yeah i don't know anyone see any interviews with kim jung ji does he talk about who his influences were in terms of like coming up with w what he does because it's it's like uh oh <laughs> this is such a great piece this is the cover of uh, the other book that i have um yeah, I, I really don't know too much about Kim Jong-ji's uh, background. Yeah, hopefully this is fun to check out. And it's nice because these pages aren't super glossy, so it is actually a little bit easier now to uh, shoot them. There was just a small section that was on um, slicker paper, we'll call it. Toronto is definitely influenced by Bisley. I, I, I'm not sure that you will see it necessarily in these pieces, but it's reminding me of, of other pieces that I've seen by him. But he definitely, definitely is a fan of Bisley, and Bisley is is a small part of um, his... Uh, sorry, I'm just going to switch hands here. Uh, is a small part of his um, build-up. I used this tech for so long, not like literally like like ripped it off but there was a lot of his technology that i was incorporating into my own stuff uh back in um probably like 2005 i started drawing a little bit more where i would do a few pieces a year have little moments where like for a month or two i would draw and then i would not draw for like another 14 months was you know just i was busy working inking you know and and uh kept procrastinating it's like ah when i finish this job i can't wait to draw and i'd be so fried from the job when i finally would have a break i would just be like oh i just want to stare at a wall and relax <laughs> so you guys can relate if you have a day job i mean whatever the day job is or if you have to go to school i mean sometimes it's it's like you're at school or you're at work and you're just like man when i get home i'm gonna just draw all night then you know five or six o'clock rolls around i find the biggest mistake in, in particular for me back then was um uh, I needed to draw in the morning more. I've, I talked about that, that I finally figured out that the idea of coming home after a full day's work wasn't going to work. It was almost better if I went to bed early and got up early and drew. That that seemed to keep me doing it more. But it's challenging to do. I mean, like I said, I have a lot of empathy for people that are interested in drawing but just don't have the time because that's the most frustrating spot to be in, you know. You're stuck working a job because you need to make a living. And I think this is part of the story here. You can kind of see the busy ish stuff going on here. Do you see that? Um, yeah, this is all in Japanese. So I can't, I can't read what the name of the story is. The pages, uh, I mean, this might be a slightly different story than the one I'm thinking of in my other book, but um, the the other pages, I think, are not just monochromatic colors. They're, they're actually uh, more colors, but this doesn't look like the story that I'm thinking of. Okay, some of this stuff is like sort of softcore porn. I'm going to skip over this 
Um, just because I don't really want to get this video blocked, but uh, he does some badass stuff. Actually, a really, really good book from um, Kim Jung Ji is the uh, what's it called? Om Falos. I it's like adult content, so if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, you might want to avoid it. But I think it's one of the more interesting books that he's done just because it's it's way more over the top in terms of like what he's drawing. Um, but I like I I really liked I was I was saying on a Patreon video yesterday that uh someone had asked me what do I think about like art is a um exhibition meaning like like that you perf like perform with your drawings and uh, I I said that uh you know I subscribed to the Super Annie channel on um YouTube and uh for a while like they were they were uploading or not uploading but they would go live with like Kim Jong Ji drawing I really enjoyed it I would just watch it and like play guitar or you know um, and I found it quite, quite interesting to watch him draw. It's fun to try to guess what he's going to do. <laughs> like, it's going to be a dragon's arm coming out of a tiger's face with, uh, people and all sorts of curvilinear five point perspective. <laughs> It is, we're 86 pages into this book. This guy has drawn more than most people draw, like, in 10 years. Although this is a 10-year retrospective. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying. This is a lot of work. Shooting the video is a lot of work. Look at this. Man, it's so cool. Hello, hello. Oh, I love this piece. Yeah, so these are muted colors. This piece in the other book is really, really colorful. I actually love this one, in fact. I, it was one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, this is not true to the actual colors. They put like a, like a light filter on these and kind of changed it. But let me, I'm going to go further back in the book. So this is an interesting piece. It's got like a little bit of like sort of a lowbrow feel. This is cool. <laughs> okay. I saw this. I thought this was interesting. Sorry. Uh, in the Tomo Kaba 2, you'll, you'll see some bicycling um, pieces. In fact, it's really similar to this one. I'm like tripping, kind of. But, yeah... Really, really cool. This is a beautiful, beautiful drawing. It's a lot of work. And then he just has tons more. That's really cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> it's so small in the book. It's funny. It's like I'll be able to see this better and figure out what the hell he's looking at when I watch the video back. These are cool. Yeah, these are basically almost the size of postage stamps in the book. Like, each one of these drawings is really, really tiny. There's, like, 12 of them on one tiny page. These are really small. Man, it's crazy. But, but again, you see, this has, like, Kim Jong-G vibes. Now, maybe maybe Kim's work was, was known elsewhere before he really blew up here. This is really cool. Yeah, let me know if you know the history of, of like, how it all kind of came about. I'd be curious. This is really cool spread. He's got the trophy. Celebration. This guy's suspicious. Why are you looking away, dude? What are you doing? What are you up to? Look at these little guys. These are real tiny, too. If you haven't seen Carlos Wante's work, I would actually recommend it. I had mentioned him a while ago, but some of the stuff is reminding me of some of Wante's stuff. But yeah, that was a real golden age of. Um, that's so dark. A, a real golden age of. Um, concept art and just everything was so exciting and 
Um, these are so small, I'm going to skip over them because it's they're, they're so tiny to look at. Okay, here's some more of these. We'll end up with some bigger pieces. This is nice. Yeah, highly, highly influential stuff for me. Really, really cool. Good stuff. This has like a little bit of an Assassin's Creed vibe. And it does say Ubisoft, so. Really played Assassin's Creed. I've watched a few walkthroughs, but I uh, never played the game. It does look fun. Well, I hope this was fun. I was excited to to do one of these today. I really wasn't sure uh, what what uh, artist I was going to spotlight, to be honest. And uh, I just started looking at my bookshelf, spotted this, and honestly, I don't think I've ever looked at this book. I'm not even kidding. I, I may have um, flipped through a, like a few of the pages just to get an idea of what it looked like, but I, I don't remember ever looking at this. So it's, it's cool. It's a nice opportunity to check this out which is what Open That Book is all about. Some people are going like, how the fuck do you have this book when you never looked at it? I'm a busy bee. That's just how. <laughs> That's really cool. I think that they did a statue of this character I'm nearly sure. I almost want, I almost bought it. I don't know if it was based on on his design or if he's drawing another character. But I'd seen a statue of this character. I, re I remember, and uh, I was really tempted to buy it. There's these Chinese knockoffs that they sell on eBay, but I know they're going to be garbage. So it's like not worth the heartbreak of weird resin pieces that are like copied from you know what I mean like other molds. I ain't that creative that I could like reshape them. <laughs> They're warped or just like a big pile of goo. Look at this guy. He's Batman and uh, Panther Man. Some of these pages are really dark. Like, hopefully they're not too dark to see, but... Okay, this is getting tricky to turn the page. I have to pop. Look at this piece. This is great. Okay, I, like I said, it's. I have to pause to switch each page now because the um, the book wants to close. Saw these. These are kind of interesting. So these are like um, they look to be white uh, white ink on uh, black paper. Pretty cool. I've always wanted to do um, the black paper drawings with like colored pencil. Um, so once I'm finished with Crystal Plant, I'm going to be able to experiment a lot more with uh, fun fun drawings and you know try to cater a little bit to social media. I was kind of talking about that yesterday in the um, Patreon video. Yeah, I had done a like a 90 minute. I do a question and answer every month for Patreon and uh we did it yesterday, but it was an hour and a half um of uh that but uh you know, social media is important. I'm just kind of taking like a brief hiatus uh, except for YouTube, but um yeah, you know, I'll I'll be back on Instagram or whatever. Like I was saying I, I kind of hope something replaces Instagram soon. <laughs> All right, god, I can't turn the pages without putting down the camera. Hold on. Okay, so we took a look at this book. This is by Katsuya Tarada. Beautiful, beautiful art. I think this is a fantastic piece to end on. Man, it's badass. Look at that. We've got lions. We've got boobs. We've got some sort of creepy cloud creature. And then a cool-looking female character. Like the cat's eye. That shine on it's nice.
yeah, this is awesome. All right, you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Uh, I might do Super Fun Sunday. I might not. We'll see. But all right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.